真感谢咱的县官队，特别感谢啊，伊本主任呢，为着伊鼓励一下，好无？ Today scripture reading is taken from the Old Testament, First Kings, chapter seventeen. We will be reading from verse one to seventeen, ah,、uh, to sixteen. I'm sorry, First Kings seventeen. Verse one to sixteen. This is the story about Prophet Elijah. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, "As the Lord the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years." Except by my word, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, "Go from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the Wadi Perim, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the Wadi. It's actually a river bank. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there." So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the Wadi Kareem, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the Wadi. But after a while, the Wadi dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, "Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon." And lived there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, the widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, "Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink." As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, "Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand." But she said, "As the Lord your God lives." I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar, and a little oil in a jar. I am now gathering a couple of sticks, so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, "Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it." And bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel: the jar of meal will not be empty, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he, and her household, ate for many, many days. The jar of meal was not empty, neither did the jar of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that He spoke by Elijah. Have you ever heard a proverb from Africa? It goes like this: a proverb. When elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. African proverb: When elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. Well, I think that African proverb can apply literally to today's scripture lesson. The elephants in question here are God and Baal, Baal, whatever you pronounce it. The Lord of Israel, God of Israel, and the God of Sidon, Lord and Baal, they are two elephants who fought to compete for a nation's allegiance. And the nation in question here, of course, you know, is Israel. Okay, 
Israel, are you going to worship, you know, the Lord, or are you going to worship Baal? And they fought for this allegiance, the competition, with a well-known destructive weapon in the old days. And you know that destructive, destructive weapon, it is dropped, you know, in the old days, and even today, drought is something that we should, uh, should be worried about. And the grass, I said, when two elephants fight, elephants fight, you know, it is the grass that suffers. And the grass that suffers here, among other people, are a widow and her son, who were caught in the middle, middle of a famine. No, no food, no food to eat. As this struggle of a cosmic scale begins, right in the middle of this struggle between two elephants, we meet one of the Bible's greatest heroes, the prophet Elijah, whose name means the Lord is my God. That is the meaning of Elijah. Elijah basically means the Lord is my God. With that name, there is no question whose side he is on. As I said, there are two elephants fighting for the allegiance of the entire nation of Israel. But Elijah, because his name means, you know, the Lord is my God. And you know immediately whose side he is on. So Elijah announced to King Ahab, the king of Israel, basically saying, you know, by the way, the queen of Ahab, his wife, is the, you know, is a staunch worshiper of Baal. So you, you, you know the situation is very complicated. The queen of our country worship Baal. And so the king is pretty much, he has no choice at all. He has to follow, probably he has to listen to his own wife. So therefore, we have two elephants fighting for the allegiance of an entire nation. But the king and the queen, uh, the queen worship another god. And the king is caught in the middle so also. It's a very complicated, awkward situation. But Elijah, whose side is very clear, he said to King Ahab, whose side is questionable, he said this, as the Lord of God of, of Israel lives, you know, this is, this is a oath. When someone said, whenever, as long as my God lives, that is, he is trying to make an oath, okay? I swear, I swear to God, okay? Elijah swear to God, before whom I stand, because I, you know, I am the God's servant, before whom I stand. There shall be neither dew nor rain these years, except by my word. He swear to God, unless I speak, unless I say, please rain. Otherwise, there won't be any rain anymore. You know, these years, you will have a terrible situation called drought. This is the weapon. You know, in the dry and arid Middle East, very dry, you know, no water at all, Middle East. This is not a prudent message to announce to a king. This is not a wise thing to say to a king. No wonder Elijah hightails it out of there. And for that reason, at God's instruction, Elijah takes refuge in the country. Elijah, after this announcement, he has to run for his own life. That was the countryside east of the Jordan River, where he drinks the cool, clear water of the nearby brook. It's called Kareem. And is provided for breakfast and dinner by some divining, you know, divinely appointed rabbits, as you know from the reading. All is well for a while. But with the passage of time, the drought, the drought took its toll on the brook also. And Elijah is given instruction by God again. 
this time God said to him, go to Seraphis, which belongs to Sidon. You know, the first time, you know, first time God told him to hide himself east of Jordan. That is still in the, you know, in the environment of the uh, nation of Israel. But this time, God told him to go over, you know, to go overseas. Okay. Go to Sidon, go to Sarafer, which be belongs to Sidon, and live there. Live overseas for a while. For well, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. A widow in Sidon, a foreigner, a foreign, a widow foreigner will feed you. Elijah had no choice at all. So he does as he is told. As he meets the widow at the gate of the town, he discovered that this widow is scattering sticks. For what? For what she says will be a fire to prepare a last meal for herself and her son. How convenient. Or maybe I should say how inconvenient. God sent me to be fed by a person who is not only, you know, is preparing actually the last meal. And where is my meal? The food is about gone and there is no likelihood of anything more. For that widow, this is the picture. And God sent Elijah to be fed by her. This is very ironic. Brothers and sisters, if Elijah had any pastoral sensitivity here, I mean, if Elijah is a pastor, like I'm a pastor, and I was told, you know, you need some food. I'm preparing for the last meal of myself and my son. Okay? Go somewhere else. If Elijah had any pastoral sensitivity here, he would have immediately inquired as to the poor widow's situation. Tell me more about it. Why you have only the last meal. And over to provide needed assistance, Let's say through the food pantry of a nearby synagogue. And plus, pastoral sensitivity, not only to provide needed assistance. Hey, let me find some food for you. And of course, you don't have money, right? I have, you know, some money to cover your expense. You know, I have, you know, every pastor has something uh, called, you know, discretionary fund. I was told by our finance committee, I haven't used that discretionary fund. I, I need to exercise my brain. Yeah, let me cover your expense from my profits. You know, I'm a prophet. I have discretionary fund. Let me cover some of your expenses. If Elijah had any pastoral sensitivity, he would inquire about the situation now he would offer some assistance, you know, find some food for him, for her, and also try to cover her expenses. But you guess what? No, Elijah does nothing of the sort. Elijah simply says, bring me some water and bring me some bread. You know, he, he, he hears that this is all they have, the last meal. He hears that already. But it makes no difference to him. In fact, Elijah does more than ask for drink and food. After, you know, after he hears the widow's dire situation, he offers this surprising promise. This is what he, what he said. Do not be afraid. Do whatever you would like to do. But first of all, make me a little cake, probably cheesecake, you know, not ordinary bread. You know, I prefer, you know, something delicate. Bring me a little cake. And afterwards, if you still have something left, make something for yourself and your son, okay? Serve me first. Even I don't really care if this is your last meal or not. Serve me first, okay? I prefer to have a little cake. And afterward, you can make something 
for your own self and for your own son. Because that says the Lord of God of Israel. This is God of Israel. This is not God of that widow. Remember, this is overseas. This is not Israel. This is Sidon. And people in Sidon worship Baal. Not the God of Israel, but this prophet Elijah says, because why should you do so? Bring me, serve me first, and serve your own needs second. Because the God of Israel, not your God, my God. The God of Israel says, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until that the Lord sent rain on the earth. You know, your problem will not, will not be a problem anymore until, you know, the drug situation is lifted. This is not what Baal says. This is a foreign God says. But surprisingly, if you continue to read, you find this. This widow said, went and did as Elijah said. He went and did as Elijah said, serve him first, serve her own need second. So that she as well as he, meaning her son, and her household ate for many days. This is not the last meal. Actually, there are many more to come. The jar of meal was not empty, neither did the jar of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. A miracle. Brothers and sisters, the miracle I am talking about this morning is not just what happened to the jar of meal and the jar of oil. A, an even bigger miracle is in display here. I'm talking about the trust. The miracle here is actually the trust of that widow, the foreigner. The trust of a widow with the you know, trust on the God of Israel. It was a real test of faith to ask the widow to feed God's prophet Elijah first before feeding her own son. The widow, as I said, is a Sidonian whose God is supposed to be Baal. Elijah is not a prophet of Baal. He is a foreigner and his promise is given in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, not the God of Sidon. Think about it. If you had been this poor widow, would you have believed this foreigner, you know, Elijah coming from overseas, asking for help? Remember, this is a life and death situation. Would you have risked your own life and the life of your own son in such circumstances? Would you have felt that the stakes here were too high to gamble on such an important decision? Serve this foreigner first and serve my own need, probably my last meal, second. This is a very big decision. These are hard questions that push each one of us back to the ultimate question of all. You know, when you are in dire situations, there are bound to be questions that will push you back to the ultimate, the original, the most important question of your life. Whom do you trust? That is today's sermon. Whom do you trust? Brothers and sisters, whom do you trust? If God were to ask you individually, whom do you trust? What would your honest answer be? Would you trust modern technology when the chips are down? I mean, when the stock market fell. Would you trust nuclear armaments to put your final trust in Star Wars game for life or death? Would you trust that? Or would you trust that your government, your employer, your power of high finance will never fail you? Is government worthy to be trusted? 
or maybe you trust your own self only. You know, I don't know what your answer will be, but this is what I know, what I'm going to tell you. As the story of Elijah seems to indicate, God had a tension, God had the inclination for using the unlikely to accomplish the impossible. God is very inclined, so inclined to use the unlikely to achieve the impossible. There were first the ravens, unlikely help, and then the destitute widow. Elijah has to trust that this poor widow will feed him. And likewise, the poor widow has to trust that this foreigner, this prophet of foreign God, will save her and her household, especially her son, if she feed this stranger first. They all have to trust each other, even if they do not know, you know, much about each other. But behold, when both of them grant that trust, I mean, the widow granted the trust, you know, upon Elijah, and Elijah granted his trust on the widow. When they have this mutual trust, even dire situations can be overturned. Even dire situations can be overturned. And I believe that is the lesson we must learn this morning. When you have mutual trust, when you allow God to achieve the impossible through the unlikely, even the dire situations can be overturned. I will now turn to the current congregation.